choir. Good evening, everybody. It's good to see everyone out tonight. Everybody braved the storm to get here, literally. We're going to start off the service tonight with number 134 in the anthem song books. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to out tonight. It's good to beat our 2023 Fisherman's Service, where we just give thanks for the Lord for what He's done through us through so many years and what He's about to do for us this fishing season as we go out. Let's just open the service in a word of prayer. Lord, we want to give you thanks tonight. Lord, we want to say, blessed be your name, because you've done so much for us in the past. And Lord, we know that you're going to continue to be with us each and every day of our lives. We know that you love us, Lord. You gave your life for us. We just want to say thank you tonight and give you the praise and the honor that you alone deserve. In your name we give you thanks. Amen. Amen. All right, at this time, we're going to have a duet, God of Wonders, followed by the choir, So Much God. Your majesty, you are holy, holy, Lord of heaven and earth, Lord of heaven and
wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy. The universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy. Lord of heaven and earth. Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah. To the Lord.
Thank you, Duet. Thank you, Choir, once again. All right, let's turn to number 67. 67. Our God is an awesome God. turn to the front to number 56. How good is the God we adore? that what this service is all about tonight, to praise him for what was past and trust him for all that's to come. At this time, we're going to have the firm foundation, I'll never sail alone, followed by the choir again, the same power. I'll never sail alone, though I am heading home. This vessel's not my own. The captain has stepped on board, thunder and crashing waves. Then seeing what mercy made, this ship was built to praise Jesus, my Lord. No, I'll never sail alone on stormy seas. I have the mighty hand of God leading me. He'll pilot me safely through waters unknown. I will not fear because I don't sail alone. I have God's promise here. The day is drawing near when I reach heaven's pier and I'll sail these seas no more. But till I make it safe, we're heaven. Away. So this boat rocks and shakes my faith in the Lord. No, I'll never sail alone on stormy seas. I have the mighty hand of God leading me. He'll pilot me safely through waters unknown. I will not fear because I don't sail alone. I'll now not sail alone on the stormy seas. Yes, his hand is made of God, always leading me. He will pilot through waters unknown. I will not fear because I don't sail alone. He'll pilot me safely through waters unknown. I will not fear. I will not fear, no, I will not fear because I don't sail alone, sail
Thank you, choir, once again, and also Firm Foundation. We're going to turn to number 436, number 436, The Goodness of God. sure if you're a fisherman in here tonight, you could say that you could sing of the goodness of God. He's always been faithful to us. We're going to open up the service tonight for anybody that might have something on their heart that they might want to say, a short word um, that they might want to give. Whatever's on your heart, you could uh, stand up wherever you are. You could come up to the pulpit if you want to be heard. Either one. However you are led. I wanted to start us out tonight, and we could turn to Genesis chapter 1 to start out. I was just thinking this week, as I was reading and thinking about the season that's before us, I was just thinking about the God that not only made this earth and made the sea that we're about to go on, but he also made the creatures in the sea and the lobster that we're about to go get. So let's look at Genesis chapter 1 and verse 9. And it says, And God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together in one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together, he called the seas. And God saw that it was good. Let's skip down to verse 20. And God said, Let the water swarm with swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the expanses of the heavens. 
So God created the great sea creatures and every living creature that moves with which the water swarm according to their kind and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. And then skip down to verse 26. Verse 26 says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. And I was thinking about that, and just thinking that the God that made the earth and the sea, and made the creatures, he also made us. And a word caught my attention when I was reading that. And it's the word that says, and he let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. So I looked up the word dominion, and by no way do I know anything about Greek. I only looked it up in the Bible and saw what the Greek word said. And the, re the Greek word for that was I'm probably going to pronounce this wrong, I'm sure. But radar, which means to have dominion or prevail against. And the last meaning of it that it mentions is to take. The same God that made these creatures made us and gave us the ability to go out and take them for ourselves. Now let's turn to Psalms chapter 95 verse 5. Psalms 95 and 5. You don't even have to turn there. I'm going to read it for you. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands form the dry land. Now turn to Psalms 107, verses 23. Psalm 107 and 23. It says, Some went down to the sea in ships, doing business on great waters. And then skip to verse 31. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love for his wondrous works to the children of man. That's what we're here for tonight, to thank the Lord, not only for what he's done with us for us in the past, to thank him for what he's going to do for us in the future. We're facing a new lobster season. We say it all the time. We're not guaranteed a single pound, but we know that God puts each and every one there for us. And I just want to read one thing, another thing, that stuck out for, to me. We looked in Genesis, and it says, God made the earth and the sea. And what did he say? It was good. He made all living creatures, birds, sea creatures, lobster. It was good. And then I want to read Psalms 107 and 31 again. This time I'm going to read from the New King James Version. It says, Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness. We're here tonight to give him thanks for his goodness and all that he's done for us and all he continues to do. Anyone else that wants to come up or have a word, go ahead, this is your time. Well, I'm no fisherman, but my father made the fish and he made the ocean, so there is something I can say about this. And actually, Cassidy came to the exact passage I was meditating on this afternoon in Psalm 107. I just want to leave one thought, both with the fishermen and also with those who stay on shore. So going back to um, this passage, if you, if you read the whole chapter, it, it has this parallelism, right? It's like, then they cried to the Lord, and then the phrase, let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, which Cassidy brought out. And actually the one that, the one that, that he brought out is one of the last rounds of this, let them, let them thank the Lord. But look what happens. It says in verse 28, or let's go a little bit before. It's talking about the seas in verse 25. He commanded and raised the stormy wind, which lifted up the waves of the sea. They mounted up to heaven. They went down to the depths. Their courage melted away in their evil plight. They reeled and staggered like drunken men and were at wit's end. Look at 28. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He made the storm be still and the waves of the sea were hushed. Then they were glad that the waters were quiet, and he brought them to their desired haven. Let them thank the Lord 
for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of men. And what stood out in my mind was, then they cried, then they were glad. And it sounds all positive, actually. It sounds like a great thing. Then they cried to the Lord. But if you actually read the whole chapter, it's not really all that positive, the examples being given. They were supposed to cry to the Lord way earlier. But then they cried. When things got bad, they cried. And when were they glad? When God did what they wanted him to do. So here's my challenge. There's a lot of things as you head out on the sea that maybe you're not wanting. Things might happen that you wouldn't wish for. But are you going to be one who only cries to the Lord when things are desperate? Or are you going to cry to the Lord from the very beginning? Are you going to cry to the Lord every day when you get up? Are you going to cry to the Lord every trap you go down to? Are you going to cry to the Lord as a way of life and not just when you think you finally need him? Because I guarantee you need him before you go out. Amen. And you need him every breath you take. And when are you going to be glad? Are you going to be glad when he brings back your freezers full of lobster? Or are you going to be glad because Jesus died for your sins? He redeemed your soul from the grave. You have a home in heaven. You're his child. Then they were glad? Uh-uh. Be glad now. Amen. Cry out now. I always say the problem is not that we cry out to God in desperation. The problem is we fail to realize we're always desperate for him. So be desperate. Be desperate for God right now on this Thursday before Tuesday comes. Be desperate and start crying out now, not just for lobster, but for intimacy with God. And be glad. Be glad now. God is good. And everything he does is good. All things work together for good. To those who love God. To those who are called according to his purpose. It won't be long. Just had a thought on my art and singing that last song that we sang and what Brother Jeremy said and his power to save us. That long and continuing after that, if if you know the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, we know that when we go out on the sea, we do not go alone. And that song says, the same power that can calm a raging sea lives in us. If you saved, the Holy Spirit and the power of God lives in you. And I was just thinking back over how many times I could see in my fishing career that the Lord has answered prayer and that the Lord has kept us safe when he didn't have to. I think of many, many times with squalls, and I'm going to tell a story that happened once with me and my daddy when I was uh, fishing with him. I can't tell you the number of times that I prayed for squalls to do a certain thing, and <laughs> by the power of the Lord, they did it. But I remember clearly, I'll never forget one time, we were coming back from the Barry Islands crossing the ocean to come back to Egg Island. And a squall was coming towards us, big, big rain covering the whole sky coming from Egg Island. And sitting in the seat, I prayed, Lord, if it be your will, I pray that you'd make a way for us to get through. <laughs> and I watched a beam of light come down in the next few minutes from the middle of that squall and split that squall right in half, right in the path that we were traveling to go right through to make it safe to come home. And I just want to encourage the fishermen as we go out to be in prayer because we have a mighty God. Thank you, thank you each and every brother that stood up. You know, I had a whole lot more to say about that chapter, Psalms 107, but in my nerves I skipped right by it because I had highlighted that the beginning of that chapter says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. And that the verse that I did re read, let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of men, is repeated four times that exact same verse in that chapter. And then the chapter ends with, whoever is wise, let him attend to these things, let them consider the steadfast love of the Lord. At this time, we're going to be favored with a duet, I Speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. 
over every heart and every mind Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Your name is power Your name is healing Your name is love Every stronghold shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety to every soul. over every enemy Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Jesus Shout Jesus from the mountains Jesus in the streets Jesus in the darkness over every Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows. want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus the choir is going to come now with their last selection, I Can Trust Him, and then Gideon and Hudson's going to come up and pray for the fishermen and the families.
us pray. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you again for all your many blessings on us, for all that you are and for all that you've done. Lord, as we approach this upcoming crawfish season, we pray that you'd be with each and every fisherman, with each and every boat as we go out. We pray that you would give us safety from all the many perils and dangers that we face, Lord, from sharks, from weather, from mechanical injuries with the boats, from air compressors and compression sickness, Lord, from so many things, Lord. You protect us and you keep us safe. And Lord, we just pray that you would watch over us this season as you have for every single year that's come before. Lord, we pray for the hurricanes, Lord. We pray that if it would be your will this year, they would be few and that they would all be guided out to the ocean where they wouldn't be a problem for us or for anyone else, Lord. We pray that you would give us another season without any loss of life and without any serious injury as we out on the seas, Lord. And we pray for the families that are left behind, Lord, especially wives left home with children. Lord, we pray that they would bring their children up in the fear and the admonition of the Lord, even in the absence of their husbands, Lord. We just pray that you would guide and protect us in each and every way. And we pray that as we're out on the boats, we pray that with our crew members and with other boats, in each and every way, we would be seeking to show Christ to each other and to those around us, Lord. We pray all these things and ask all these things in the Lord Jesus Christ's holy and precious name and for his honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Dear Lord, we just want to thank you again just for <clears throat> your goodness, Lord, um, as we can't help but be reminded of through this service, Lord, just of how good you truly are to us, Lord, not just as fishermen, but as people. Lord, we, we hear that list just then that Hudson prays, and, you know, it's, it's enough to scare anybody sometimes when we think of all the stuff that could go wrong or might go wrong, but, Lord, you've been so good, and you are so good, and we know that you're going to bring us through it again. <laughs> we'll praise you for all that is past and trust you for all that is to come. Lord, we just want to thank you for that, Lord. Lord, right now, I just want to pray for the families that are left behind as the men go out to see you, Lord. Lord, I want to pray for those who struggle with the anxiety and the worry of their husbands, sons, brothers, whatever it is, leaving the island, Lord, and that struggle with the just the, the anxiety and the worry of it all, Lord. I pray that you would comfort those and that you would really fill that need that they have, Lord, and really be that peacemaker for them and that uh, you would just let them know that we're in your hands and that nothing can take us out, Lord. Nothing will ever separate us from your love. Nothing will ever separate us from any, anything that, any good thing that you have for us, Lord. Lord, thank you for meeting every one of our needs each and every year. Lord, of course, sometimes we think of wants and what we want, but Lord, we, you always give us what we need. Sometimes we don't see it immediately, but it always shows up that you've given us what we need, and you've been so good. When we think of others in the world who fish, Lord, and how much loss of life it even is, Lord, and other fisheries in the world, and how little we've had as a community, Lord, as fishermen, how few injuries we have, how few major accidents we have, Lord. I can't help but think that it's because of the power of prayer and the people on the island that are left behind just praying for us, Lord, and for the people that are out there on the sea praying, Lord, thank you for answering these prayers, Lord, and thank you for being with us. And again, Lord, I just want to thank you just for all that you've done. Thank you for all that you're going to do. And as we do pray for a prosperous season, Lord, I pray most of all that no matter what happens, you would get all the praise, honor, and glory from this season, from our lives, from our jobs, from our uh, whatever we're doing, Lord, that you would just get the honor and the glory and that no one else but you alone. Lord, help us not to forget what you do for us and help us to see you through it all and help us to live lives out on those boats, Lord, that reflects you. Lord, it's so easy to just push you to the side sometimes, but Lord, help us to keep you at the front. And dear Lord, we pray these things, we ask these things, and we thank you that we know you're going to be with us. And it's these things we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's sing in closing number four. 
can we rise and sing this one out to his glory? Number four, how great thou art. I was just thinking of the verse, and when I picked it out, I honestly wasn't thinking of the verse. But the first verse says, O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder. We heard a lot of that before we started this service tonight, didn't we? Thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art. Number four, let's rise and sing it out loud.
Amen. Thank you for your singing. Thank you for coming out tonight. I pray that you had a blessing tonight for hearing the word and hearing the music. But we pray that God gets the most blessing. All the praise.